Margaret, are we ready to get going? I believe we are. Welcome everyone. This is the webinar for Book Points, the open source summer reading program. This webinar will be recorded so you can rewatch it or share it with your colleagues after it's posted to the Bywater Solutions YouTube channel. My name is Margaret and I'm a member of the Bywater Solutions support team. During this webinar, you're invited and encouraged to ask questions in the Q&A box. I'll share your questions with Jim to answer them. Now, allow me to introduce the person you're all here to meet, Jim Craner. Jim is a library technologist for the Galicia Group, where he has spent the past decade working on websites, apps, and maps for libraries. He is also volunteer for and a member of his local library district. Jim. Summer reading is a cherished institution at libraries across the country. And often it's a lot of work. Library staff spend months designing and executing these programs every year. Tell us what book points can do for these hardworking librarians. Sure thing, glad to. And uh, Margaret, thanks to, to you and Bywater for having me today. Um, and thanks for the introduction. As, as Margaret said, I work for the Galicia Group and we're the uh, primary sponsors of the Book Points Project. Um, and as she also mentioned, I wear another hat sometimes. I'm a volunteer and a board member for my local library district here in Illinois. And just to let you know, uh, my local library is uh, very small. We have an annual budget of less than $70,000 and uh, our total staff. Uh, is less than one full-time equivalent. Um, so I know what it's like to work with very small libraries and also um, some larger libraries. Uh, Book Points, we've tried to make it suitable for libraries of all shapes and sizes. Um, we try to think of it like a Swiss Army knife. It's a toolkit that you can use to build uh, a custom summer reading website that matches your library's uh, summer reading program requirements. Uh, one of the things we learned working on book points is that even though there are some similarities, every library seems to do summer reading a little differently. Um, and again, we've tried to make a, an application that supports all of those different programs. Um, we do want to make this as interactive as possible. So again, I do invite and encourage um, any questions. If there's anything you want to look at closer or in more detail, uh, please let me know. Before we actually look at the Book Points application, um, I'll start by showing you the Book Points website. Uh, again, we're trying to encourage libraries to participate in Book Points as a community of libraries working together uh, to build uh, open source software. So I know um, if you're all Koha uh, library users, you're all pretty familiar with open source where we're all working together uh, to build a, a better software product. And Book Points really embraces that open source model. Uh, we started the project several years ago in 2015, um, and it was uh, grant funded and organized by the California Library Association, CLA, and on the East Coast, the Virginia State Library. Um, and so they uh, provided grant funding together, and our company was contracted to build it. Um, I've been the lead developer on it, but we have had other developers um, work on the project, and we've even had some libraries contribute uh, code uh, and other assets back to the project. So again, we definitely encourage that open source um, ethos. For instance, one of the neat things about Book Points um, is the fact that we have uh, our shared badge gallery. Uh, Book Points uses digital badges, which you can think of like virtual stickers, to incentivize readers. And some of our libraries have actual graphic designers on staff who make custom badges and they've shared those badges with the community so that other libraries can download and use those same graphics. Um, similarly, uh, the iRead program, for those of you that have libraries uh, that are uh, iRead instead of CSLP, um, iRead does give us permission to use their graphics. So we can actually provide some um, iRead customized graphics and uh, iRead badges that match, um, <clears throat> excuse me, that match the materials that iRead distributes at your library. So again, please try to think of Book Points as a community project and 
uh, all libraries are invited to join this community uh, and to work to make book points better for, for everybody. So that said, uh, let's go ahead and dive into the application. I've got this program open in two different windows. And we'll take a look at the first window here. Um, you can see the book points logo and the title here and the slogan. Everything on the book points website is customizable. Book points is built on top of the Drupal website uh, software, which again is open source. So any Drupal module uh, or component that you want to install and enable, you can do so. Um, if you already know how to administer and use Drupal, that's great. You can do a lot of extra customization with book points, but you don't have to. Book points is designed to be customized by any librarian or library staff person without any special knowledge of HTML, CSS, JavaScript, or anything like that. Uh, we've tried to pre present all the customization options within a point and click interface uh, to make it as library friendly as possible. One of the things you'll notice here um, on this screen is that I'm logged in as an administrator, uh, and there's a big prominent orange, uh, orange warning box on the left here advising me of that. Um, we offer two different user levels for book points. We have the administrator, uh, that's what you're seeing now, and that has all the menu options available. available. Uh, so I can configure the program and change the graphics and the colors and all that fun stuff. Usually you only would use that account in the springtime. Um, we also offer librarian accounts for day-to-day -day access. And those have um, less options on the menu here on the left, and they focus on only the things that librarians need to do day-to-day. -day such as resetting a user's password, um, noting that a user claimed a prize that they've earned, something like that. Um, so when you first log in here as a librarian or as an administrator, um, the first thing you see is a dashboard. Um, one of the areas where book points really shines is the data that we collect. Um, because book points is open source, we share report templates among our libraries. So we have reports for how many readers signed up on a given day at a given branch, how many of a certain age, how many attendees of a certain school or of a certain grade. We have reports on all of this data. What's the most popular book read um, for each age group, et cetera. Um, and every time a library requests a new report, uh, we create that report template, and then we let other libraries use that template as well. So you'll find that there are a lot of reports and, and you might not need most of those reports for your needs, uh, but they're there. And because we can build on additional reports and share those with other libraries, you might find some interesting reports that, uh, that other libraries have, have created. By default, the dashboard, uh, not a lot of data in February on our demo site here, as you can see, um, just a, a few demo readers that we've set up here, but you can see some of the data that we collect on the number of readers in each program, the amount of reading in each program, popular online activities, uh, we don't have any upcoming events scheduled, uh, books, and then even our prize inventory system down here at the bottom. And each one of these dashboard items corresponds to one of our reports over here in the reports menu. So you can actually click through into any given report and get a list of, for instance, um, clarify your readers by branch or by uh, week, date, et cetera. So again, uh, reporting is something we're, we're pretty proud of. Uh, if there are any reports you'd like to see in more detail today, again, feel free to type that in the chat window and uh, Margaret will let me know and we can, we can dive in in more detail. So, Jim, so we spent a few minutes, oh, yes. Uh, so this has prompted a question um, that I'm thinking about. You're collecting all this excellent data about uh, mm -hmm. your library users. Um, how does BookPoints help uh, uphold library patron privacy policies? Uh, can this data be anonymized, say, after the summer reading program's over or anything like that? That is a great question. So I'm a bit mm -hmm. of a, a privacy um, fan. I don't want to say, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I take it very seriously. BookPoints takes it very seriously. The State Library of Virginia, which was one of, again, one of our original founders uh, and funders, um, they had a lot of very good privacy policies that we incorporated into our planning. So for instance, you'll notice there, there's no social media 
integration at all. Uh, we don't provide the way to do that. You can obviously, because it's customizable, you can add in your own Facebook widgets or Twitter widgets, and we don't stop you from doing that, of course. It's open source, uh, but we don't provide anything like that out of the box. Um, for the book points customers we host, just like all of our other websites, uh, we use uh, encryption, uh, HTTPS, SSL encryption, uh, to perfect, uh, pro, excuse me, protect information in transit. Uh, we don't advise on a privacy policy. So let me give you an example. Um, we encourage every library to customize the sign-up process to reflect their own privacy policy. Um, so let me give you an example of what that might look like. Uh, we're looking at the same book points implementation here, but I'm, I'm logged out. I'm not logged in as a librarian here. I'm just an average user. Um, again, all of this information is, is customizable. You can easily change the graphics and the text over here on the right-hand panel or the, the informational text here. Um, just like any website on our sign-up page, we have a terms and condition box here. Now, it's very easy for you to customize this and put this text in. Um, we, I'm not a lawyer, right? I'm a developer who works with libraries. So I can't give you the official advice on, on what should go in here. Officially in our documentation, we recommend that you consult with your library management, possibly your city or county attorney, or your library's corporate counsel if you have one, on what the guidelines are you should follow. Um, in practice, most of our libraries, I believe, keep this little template that we provide the same and maybe put something else in here like um, like their generic privacy policy from their existing website such as, link out you know, exactly exactly so you can do that or you can copy and paste it and incorporate it into this terms of use section here this is customizable you can include HTML or format the text um, and you can force people to, uh, to agree with these terms before they can create an account um, I've I've been a system administrator for over 20 years. I um, have great confidence in the security precautions for the websites and applications that we host. Um, Drupal is um, has a fairly good reputation for security. So if you're hosting book points yourself, remember it's open source. You can download this and host it on your own server. Um, if you do that, I would encourage you to sign up for our security mailing list because if there are any uh, security announcements made on the underlying Drupal software. We'll announce those and uh, and pass those on to you. Uh, but I guess to answer your, your big question, the privacy policy is really up to you. Uh, it's up to your library on what your privacy policy is. Uh, because BookPoints is customizable, you can customize it to collect any data you want it. You could ask people for their mother's maiden name and social security number. I would never encourage that, obviously, but it's it's possible. No, definitely uh, not. So obviously, <laughs> Yeah, right. So respect respect patron privacy. Uh, if your library does not already have a privacy policy for uh, users of your websites, online catalogs, etc., this might be a good time to have that discussion. Uh, I mean, that's a little outside of my, again, my uh, area of expertise, but um, that that might be a good time to to have that discussion so so people know. Um, so again, if you host with us, um, we follow industry best practices for uh, security backups, encryption, everything. Um, if you host book points yourself, it's based on Drupal, which is uh, secure. We uh, give you the latest secure version of Drupal when you, when you download it. Um, and then we encourage you to either sign up with our mailing list or the Drupal security mailing list to keep your website secure and up to date. Uh, keeping your website secure and up to date is the best way to protect the data that lives on the website. Um, you can also just not collect any personally identifiable information. We had, I think, at least one library in Virginia that changed the last name field to last initial. So they're really only collecting first name and last initial of any of the kids. Uh, no contact information for the kids. It's all just the parents' contact info, et cetera. Um, so we, we definitely have the, the ability to lock that down. Definitely take that seriously. If anyone has any suggestions, concerns about protecting patron privacy, it's a big priority for me, and I'd love to hear your feedback or your ideas. Does that hopefully answer the question? Yes, I think it does. Thank you. Okay. All right. Well, let's jump in. I've already taken a look at the uh, 
the patron perspective of book, book points. So let's take a look at that a little closer. Um, I showed you the home page. Again, everything on here is customizable. Um, this is a default logo and title, and I put Anytown Public Library in here. You can change the color and typography and logo, as well as the color typography of, of absolutely everything else on the site. Um, and again, you don't need to know HTML. If you don't want to use text title, you can use a banner logo, such as this one. Uh, we've not released our 2020 uh, default banners yet. We, have, we usually release a few banners, like the iRead example I showed you earlier. This was last year's um, default space theme banner. Uh, this was a Canva template that we let libraries customize so they can put their own library name there. Uh, so you can use a banner or, um, again, just a single uh, icon there for your logo, um, depending on whatever you have handy. All the colors are customizable, so you can make your website match your existing website as well. Um, even the text here on the, the sign-up box is, again, everything is customizable. We'll click the register button so you can see how this works. Again, I'll continue to point out there is customizable uh, text chunks everywhere that you can edit. Um, we do use a family or household account model. The first year we wrote book points, we um, didn't have a family model. So every reader had to have their own username and password. And parents of multiple children very vocally let us know that was not acceptable. Uh, so we now do have a family account model uh, where you create one account for your family. Uh, will be the patron examples. Uh, let's go ahead and put in a fake address here so you can see how this works. Um, in the past, we've had libraries not want to require an email address. Uh, because Drupal does require an email address, uh, we used um, a little button that would just uh, cover that field up and put in a fake email address. Um, so it's up to you on, on how you really want to set this up. Um, many of our libraries only have a single branch, so we obscure the favorite branch field for them, uh, but you can import a list of branches. Uh, many of our features are available on a per branch basis. So for instance, if you want to offer a raffle or a drawing at the end of the summer, you can draw tickets on a per branch basis and award a prize per branch. Again, if you just have a single branch in your system, you don't have to use that feature. All of these fields are customizable. They can be made required, optional, or completely left off. We can also add additional fields. We can also add uh, help text for any field as well. Um, again, here's where I always point out, I am not a lawyer, so we officially encourage you to check with your own uh, management or city county attorney on what your privacy policy, policy should be. Before I click on the Create New Account button, I'll point out that you can even edit the footer. You can put things in here like uh, graphics for your sponsors, I think is a good thing to put in the footer, um, or other, other fun graphics. We'll go ahead and click Create New Account here. So we've created our sign-up account here, and I won't save the password. Um, and now we create an account for each of our readers. So if we're a parent, we're going to create one account for each of our kids. If we're a daycare teacher, we're going to create an account, uh, a reader profile for each of the kids in our class. That's um, a common use case for, for uh, summer reading that we found. So I'm going to go ahead and put in a couple of kids here first. Patsy Patron, she's 10, which I think is about fourth grade, and she goes to Elm Elementary. Um, again, all of these fields customizable. We can make them required or optional. We can change the help text. We can say, you know, for grade, we can say enter the grade you're entering this fall instead of the one you finished. Um, for schools, we always recommend that you use this selector, autocomplete, and that you don't let people just type in the name of the school. For instance, if your kids um, go to Kennedy Junior High School, you're going to see people say KJHS, Kennedy JHS, Kennedy High, uh, JFK JHS, et cetera. Um, that makes it much harder to create a report of how many kids came from each school, which again is one of our built-in reports. So we encourage you to pre-populate the list of schools. Uh, you can either type them in manually or upload them in a, in a spreadsheet, whichever is uh, easier for you. Again, every field on here, completely customizable. We only have a few programs on here. Um, I will say the vast majority of our libraries have four programs, pre-readers, kids, teens, adults. 
you do not have to have four programs. You can have just one program that everybody goes into. You can also have more. We had a library that had, I think, seven programs. They had the traditional programs as well as an ESL program, uh, I think a program for kids in a certain um, challenge academy school, um, and a program for actual city employees to encourage reading in city employees. Um, again, all of the text here is customizable. We do not provide a way to force kids into a certain program based on their age. Um, we've discussed that option in the past, but we've ruled it out um, because it makes it too confusing to do exceptions for those kids uh, who, who don't fit into those neat categories. So that is a decision we've made uh, because BookPoints is open source. It's something that we could, could work around in the future. Excuse Let's go me, ahead Jim? and put past the, oh, sorry, yes, question. So you said uh, on average there are four programs. Um, is there a limit to the total number of programs that BookPoints can handle? No, no, just whatever you see on that screen I just saw. Um, so you'll want that your programs will display in that grid. Um, so you'll want to go ahead and just make sure you describe each program adequately so people know which program they want to attend. Um, and you could replace the text description with like graphic buttons if you wanted to. Um, again, if you have, if, if you're a designer, if you have design skills available, be a volunteer or an in-house designer. Um, otherwise, you can just use text as I did in the previous example. Um, and just describe the program there a little bit. Let me add another reader and you'll, we'll go back to that screen. I'll, I'll, we'll take a closer look at it. Um, let's go ahead and add a uh, little brother for Patsy. We'll call him PD Patron. Uh, kindergarten. Um, go ahead and keep him at the same school and click next. Um, I'll go ahead and select a different program just to show you that they're different, but again, this text is customizable when you create your program, um, and there is no limit to the number of programs. There is no hard limit, I believe, to the number of readers you add. Um, most families aren't going to hit a limit anyway, but I can see where daycare teachers, that use case, um, they might, it might start to get unwieldy when you have 20 or 30 readers <laughs> uh, all in the same quote-unquote household. Um, so that's probably the only limit that you would run up against. So let's take a look at the reader dashboard. Um, this is the dashboard we've used since uh, 2017. We are doing a graphical refresh for 2021 next year. Um, the dashboard is mobile friendly. BookPoints is not an app that you have to download. Um, that process we found is, is just too complicated for most libraries to deal with. So BookPoints is, an, uh, uh, is a web application and it's mobile friendly. So in some libraries, over 75% of BookPoints users access it via a mobile device, phone or tablet. So obviously we need to respect those users. Uh, this horizontal layout will break down gracefully into a vertical layout on a phone or a tablet um, so that it's still usable. Um, so we'll go through here and take a quick look at the reader dashboard. I wanna point out a few things here. We designed BookPoints to match any existing library summer reading program because many libraries continue to do paper logs side by side with book points. So if you have your kids do reading by the number of minutes per day or the number of pages per day or the number of just overall books they read this summer, whatever unit of measurement you use, you can set up a program to match your, your, your offline program. Um, and you can set it up differently for different age groups. So when I'm looking at Patsy's book log here, you'll notice she can enter uh, a title. So Diary of a Wimpy Kid, forget the author's name, and she read for 60 minutes today. It's her favorite book, right? So she's in the kids program where they're tracking um, how many minutes they read. So when she submits her book log, the number of points she gets is based on how many minutes she read. And here she sees a congratulations message. I want to make a distinction because PD here, oh, I inadvertently put PD in another minutes program. My apologies. I'm going to add a third reader here. We'll put him in the teen program. He goes to Rock and Roll High School. Because the teen program does not have minutes 
Instead, when I look at Paul's book log here, they're only reading books. They don't read minutes or pages or chapters. The team program reads just books. So there is no minutes field. So you can design each of your programs differently. You don't have to change your programs to match the software. We always want to fix the software to match your existing programs. So Paul's a precocious kid. He read 1984 by Orwell. He thought it was just okay. And when he submits it, notice he doesn't have minutes and he got a different number of points as well. So each of your age group programs can be set up differently and they can track a different number uh, or a different unit of measurement as, as readers progress toward their goal. Um, I'd like to point out one big thing on the right right hand panel here, activities and secret codes. Uh, activities and secret codes give you the option to let people earn reading points for things besides reading. And I emphasize option because libraries seem to fall into two schools of thought. Some libraries say, look, summer reading is just about reading. We'll let kids do other stuff on the website, but it doesn't count toward their reading total. And if we say they have to read 10 books, they have to read 10 books. These people can still use activities, but they don't make them worth any points. It's just something that a kid can do to say they did it. Um, other libraries make online activities the equivalent of reading, either the equivalent of one book or 20 minutes or two hours or whatever they, they feel is appropriate. So you have the option with these extra non-reading activities on whether or not you want to make them count toward the reader's summer goal. Hopefully that makes sense to everybody and you can kind of see how your program might be designed. Again, we need to accommodate libraries that have a, a wide variety of different programs. Um, activities are just fun things that kids can say they did. Uh, and they're, they're based on the honor system. So for instance, if someone says they played a board game at the library, we give them 20 points and a digital badge. So, so as I click claim here, you can see that I now have an additional 20 points and a badge. But if I don't think that those games are equivalent to reading, I don't have to give that kid any points. That's on a library by library basis. That's your choice. Secret codes are very similar, except they're not on the honor system. Uh, you have to actually enter a secret code. Let me go back to a kid's program here. Um, because I have a, a secret code for Harriet the Spy. So let's type that in here and hit enter. Cool, secret code accepted, congratulations. So Patsy got some extra points and she got an extra little digital badge down here on the bottom of the screen. Secret codes are really cool because they give you a lot of flexibility. Traditionally, librarians hand them out at story time. So if you wanna get every digital badge this summer, you have to attend every story time at your local branch. Uh, but you can also do things like just print them out and hide them in a book. So when the kid gets the book home, they read it and the piece of paper falls out that says, enter this code for extra points. Um, one library in Virginia partnered with their local museum. So to get the special digital badge, you had to visit that museum at one point that summer and get the secret code off a poster on the information desk. So they were trying to encourage sort of a partnership between them. Um, so there's all sorts of cool ideas you can do with secret codes. And again, that's something where the, it's not on the honor system, so you actually have to give the code. I don't know if I have another code in here as well. Yep, I have the Bond 007 code as well. It's only worth 10 points. So you can see how that works. And then I have another badge down here as well for that. So Jim, any questions about secret codes or activities? Oh, sounds like we do, yes? We don't have any questions that have come in just yet, but I just wanna reiterate that this sounds like so much fun and such a way to encourage um, your patrons, uh, the kids participating in the program to try new things, uh, to go to different locations and different programs and then get the whole family involved to try out something new besides collect your book, read it, turn in your uh, slip to say you read it. Uh, that's just so cool. Well, thank you, exactly. Yeah, we, we really wanna try to incentivize that. Um, I will stress though that we do always wanna support patrons that still use paper logs. Uh, and let me show you how we do that. Uh, that's a, actually a good segue. Um, I'm going to flip back to another window. This is back to my first window where I'm an administrator. And you can see here that I have a staff menu on the left where I do some of the staff activities. 
Um, I do have a paper entries item here. So we have libraries that want to use the book points reporting system, even though they still want to give people the option to do paper logs. So if you collect 200 paper logs, you can actually do data entry and enter them into the book point system. Um, and that way their totals will still show up in your end of summer reports. And that way you don't have to download the data yourself in Excel and add everything in yourself. You can just do data entry this way. We've even had a library not use the book points online app for their patrons at all. And instead they just collected paper logs and they had a, a, a page who entered them all into this paper entries form and that they, they, they just used the book points reporting system. So they, they just entered everything in here manually at the end of the summer. Um, I do not envy that person, but it's, it's an option. Uh, and then they were able to use book points, charts and graphs and reports uh, to illustrate their, their paper log. Um, but it's designed to be a side by side system. So you can just tally up your total number of um, paper log minutes. So if our, our kids total read 12,000 hours on paper log, I can just enter them there and bump up my total numbers or you can have somebody enter each paper log manually. So create a new reader. This kid said he was 10 years old, et cetera. Fill out the program they're in and then enter the number of units they read that summer. So um, one thing I will point out, crossing our fingers, knocking on wood that for 2021, we're gonna have the ability to scan paper logs and then you'll be able to automatically preview them as a PDF and uh, enter that information a little faster automatically. Um, so we're trying to keep the system useful for libraries that still want to do traditional paper logs. And I think that's a priority that we're always going to have. We never want to say you can only use the system if everybody is online. Um, and I think that's that's pretty important to us. Uh, Margaret, does that sort of answer your, hopefully, oh, hopefully, hopefully shows people some uh, Mm -hmm. some of the flexibility we have with, with book points here. Yeah, I can imagine um, that you need to get data in from a variety of sources sometimes. Uh, now that did strike another question for me, um, since you mentioned a library that just uh, collected their paper totals and then used this uh, software for rendering um, the success of their summer reading program. Now, uh, mm -hmm. over I imagine we might have a few attendees that might have used this before. Uh, is there a way to kind of uh, do uh, summer 2017, 2018, 2019 and look back at those uh, kind of reading history data sets and do different reports based on time period? Could a library that just got book points this year maybe import the previous data so they could show over time successive growth in their summer reading programs? Great question. So we wipe our all the patron databases for our libraries um, at the end of September every year. So we don't store any longitudinal data whatsoever. So the system is not built to accommodate it. Um, and that's partially a privacy protection. We don't want to be responsible for it after mm -hmm. the end of summer. Uh, we do send out multiple notices throughout September, uh, beginning Labor Day weekend, saying, remember, if we're going to shut the site down. Please let us know if you need help exporting any of your data. Now, so to answer that question longitudinally, I would encourage everyone to print out the reports or export them or save them um, or save the raw data. You can also save the raw data itself um, at the end of every summer uh, and then let us go ahead and purge the, the, the patron data, like phone numbers and things like that. Um, and that way you'll still have all of the, the report value data um, and you can save that from year to year. Um, but no, we don't provide a way to, to import the previous report years as well to compare those. Um, might be something to consider uh, as a data analyst. Um, my preference is to use my own tools for that from year to year anyway. Um, but again, it's an open source product. So if someone thinks that would be valuable addition, we'd love to talk with them about it. Um, okay, so I have one other quick feature to show you in the reader dashboard. Notice here, I just, uh, while, while I was speaking, I gave Patsy an extra 500 minutes here, gave her a little boost here, and you can see that she won a bunch of badges and raffle tickets and congratulatory messages all at once because I gave her that big chunk of hours. What I'm trying to show you here is this prize notice. Most libraries offer a prize that kids have to come in and pick up at some point during the summer. Some libraries offer multiple prizes. 
we provide a prize inventory control system because some libraries have really nice prizes. Um, when I was a kid, it was pretty much book it pizza coupons, uh, but some libraries are, are giving away uh, books or um, 10 or $20 gift cards in some cases, um, and they need to track the inventory of those prizes. We also want to prevent kids from going to every branch in a city and picking up a prize at every branch if they haven't earned it. So prize control is optional. Uh, some libraries, for instance, uh, I mentioned them an example yesterday, Orange County Public Library. They don't give away prizes like that. They just let kids come in and grab a few stickers from the sticker pile. So they don't need to do prize inventory control. Um, so they don't use this little message here that says you have at least one prize waiting. Uh, but for, if you do want to use prize inventory control, you designate when a kid has won a prize, um, and then this message will pop up for them. And it'll stay there until the kid actually goes to the library to claim the prize. So I'm going to go ahead and say I'm Patsy. I see this notice here. I go to my local branch, and I need to claim the prize. Um, now I'll switch hats, and I'll be Larry Librarian. I'll go to my staff menu and click on Readers. I've got a list of uh, fake readers in here. I'll go down to Patsy, and I'll manage her. And I can see that she has earned a prize. She has not claimed it yet. It is safe to hand over the pizza coupon, mark it claimed, and then notice that it's now been uh, it's now been claimed. Um, as Patsy, the next time I visit my page, notice that that prize notice is gone. It no longer is nagging her to go pick up her prize. Back on the librarian perspective, if I scroll to the bottom of my dashboard, I can see my prize report here, and I can see that that prize has been claimed four times. But I have another prize down here unclaimed, so I need to make sure I have enough of those in inventory. So it's a relatively simple system, but it can help help you keep an eye on your inventory if you only have a limited supply or if you have to reorder uh, or source more pizza coupons, for instance, halfway through the summer. Um, so again, please let me know if you have questions about how we do prize inventory control. Again, not every library uses that feature, uh, but if you do have a limited number of prizes, um, it's a great way to help keep people from, uh, well, from trying to take more than their fair share. Jim, we do have uh, a question? question. Shoot, yes. Dan asks, is there a log of which staff member has given what prize and time and day when that prize was given out? Oh, that is a really good question. Um, so there is not a log kept by default, but that would be a really trivial feature to implement because the system does make an explicit note when that happens. It's just not ever collated into a log that you could view, but it would be probably take me about 30 minutes to add that feature. Um, and we've never had it requested yet, or I probably would have added it. So Dan, if, if you're going to use book points in 2020 or 2021, and you think that would be useful, um, that's pretty trivial to add, and, um, and we'd be happy to, to add that on there. Um, kind of a Kind of a big brother feature, but I can see why it might be useful. So, uh, uh, so we could definitely we could definitely do that. Great question. Um, and again, feel free to ask about customizations or, or questions. Um, again, we're built using Drupal, so any of you folks who are Drupal professionals probably already have a million ideas of how you'd customize this. Uh, but that's an example of something that I can I can add very easily to the code base. Um, and since it's open source, other libraries might find it useful in the future. So. Um, okay, other questions about the reader dashboard? We've looked at most everything in the reader dashboard, the book log, codes and activities, uh, obviously our digital badges. Um, the digital badges, it's really at your discretion how many you want to add. We had one library that said for every book a kid reads, we're going to give them some points and we're going to give them a, a, a digital badge. So they uploaded and configured 60, uh, 65 digital badges, something like that. And we have other libraries, most libraries I would say award about 10 badges, depending on how you want to do your program. Um, so it's really up to you how you want to set this up. We're looking at a few exam random example badges here. Um, again, I'll point out the numbered gear badges here. These might look familiar. These are from iRead a few years ago. 
Again, iRead does give us every year um, badges and header graphics and logos. Um, so if you're using iRead materials this year, uh, you can have badges that match like your bookmarks and your posters and, and your brochures and all that fun stuff. Okay, um, I'm going to call your attention to a few other really simple features up here that we offer. Um, because BookPoints is based on Drupal, we've included some of the core Drupal features, but you don't have to use them. They're just alternatives for libraries that don't have any other options. So for instance, we provide a simple event calendar with book points that you can use to add story times, um, summer reading kickoff, summer reading pizza party, stuff like that. You don't have to use this calendar. We can make the events link here point to your existing website calendar if you have one. But if you don't already have one, then feel free to use this one. Uh, same thing for book reviews. I know there are libraries that don't want to use our simple book review feature. Instead, they'd rather just link, uh, link this reviews item to their existing website book review feature or a Goodreads page or their Facebook page, and that's fine. Uh, but we do provide a simple book review feature where a kid can write a paragraph about a book they read, and then a librarian can publish that somewhere else. Um, again, you don't have to use that feature, but you can. Photo gallery, same thing. If you don't already have a website uh, photo gallery on your main website, this is a simple way you can add and upload photos of your summer reading kickoff party, uh, kids holding their favorite books, story time pictures, things like that. Um, it's not the most advanced photo gallery in the world, but it's a simple way that any librarian can easily add photos um, without having to interface with their, their main website. So we do provide some additional little features like that. Again, because it's Drupal, because it's open source, you can add any of your own features as well. It'd be very trivial to add a new form if you want people to write an essay about their favorite book or what reading means to me, um, or a form that says click here to submit your own summer reading uh, adventure, something like that. So, um, so again, feel free, yes, question. Uh, yes, I've got one on your reviews since uh, when the uh, summer reading participant is submitting uh, the reading they completed, you have that star rating system. And since you just mentioned linking out to a library's reviews on their ILS or OPAC uh, or Goodreads, um, is there any way to tie in those uh, reviews, those stars collected, and then send it over to um, the library's OPAC to Goodreads for the library uh, and kind of connect or integrate uh, those review systems if the library has them both set up? Not easily. It's pretty rudimentary. Um, again, I would love to develop that feature more if mm -hmm. a library expressed an interest in that and wanted to give us feedback and be a beta tester. Um, that would be a fantastic feature to add. Um, we also have a book list feature, which is actually not visible right now. Um, book list, let, let me flip back to the administrator view and see if I can show you real quick. Um, book lists let you add a list of books, and when you add a list of books, you can add a cover image, and then you can also um, include a, an OPAC catalog link. So um, my standard book list is usually the example is the Harry Potter series. Um, Put, some, put a controversial <laughs> comment in there to, to get people started. Uh, so we'll save that. And now when we add a book to the book list, um, oh, I should have added this before to show everybody. Um, I'll, pull, I'll pull up an old example uh, a little bit later in the Q&A session. It allows you to add a cover and then a link. So when users see the book list, they see, in this case, I guess, what, six or seven thumbnail images of the cover. And when they click a cover, it goes directly into your catalog. Um, if, if you have a publicly accessible catalog. So you can give people a book list and then they can click right in there to reserve it. Um, so that's really right now the only sort of ILS or OPAC integration that we offer. Um, although uh, we've been discussing with Koha about doing integration in the future and how, what that might look like for 2021 and beyond. Um, so again, if people have ideas for what would be a cool feature, um, this is one of the great things about open source. You can mm -hmm. 
tell your cool idea to me, and uh, if we get libraries on board, we can build that out, and you can help us test it, and then all the libraries can can benefit from that. Um, and I apologize for not having together. a book list. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, I was gonna say I apologize for not having the Harry Potter book list pre-populated uh, this year. Usually, that's my go-to example, and I make snide comments about it, uh, about the books um, throughout. So, uh, um, but yeah, that's just one of those auxiliary features that we offer, um, and uh, we encourage you to add your own uh, or develop those. If you if you have a complex form for where people pick their own book, I can I can package that up and let other libraries use that. Um, so we always encourage people to share their ideas and their innovations. Um, you know, I, again, we back to the BookPoints community. We have a mailing list and a website for them just for this sort of thing. If you have cool ideas or you're really happy about a new program that you did this summer, please post it to the mailing list or email me and I will post it to the website um, because we want to share those ideas and, and share the innovation um, among our libraries. So um, – Let's go ahead and look if again, feel free to interrupt me with questions, Margaret. Um, let's just look at some of the setup stuff on the back end just so you can see how easy it is. Um, for instance, I showed you those activities earlier, such as play a board game at the library. Um, it's really easy to set those up and add them. So um, here's a list of the activities, and you can see that we describe it. This is what the reader sees. Um, we can award them a badge, uh, and we can award them points. Remember, that's optional. You don't have to equate activities with reading if you want to be one of those reading-only libraries. Um, and it's just a simple form to add a new activity. Click Add Activity. Uh, maybe this one is um, Introduce Yourself. A librarian. Um, meet a librarian and say hi. Okay, so now we can say how many points is that worth, if any. We'll make that worth 100 points, so we really want to meet our librarians. Um, and I'll just pick a badge at random here, the example badge. And we'll make that available to all of our programs. And boom, now that activity is going to show up on uh, the activities list for Patsy here. Scroll down, introduce yourself to a librarian. Some libraries just do a few activities. Um, we made that scrollable because some libraries have 20 to 30 activities. Like they do sort of a bingo type thing. The kids have to do like 15 activities to get all their points. Um, so you can see just how easy it is to do some of this stuff on the back end. Um, for instance, adding a badge works basically the same way. We have our, our list of badges here. You can see these are a bunch of iRead badges that we've accumulated over the years. Um, we include all of these by default. You can also download more from our website that other libraries have contributed. Um, and we'll release the 2020 iRead. Oh, actually, we just released the 2020 iRead set um, earlier this earlier this year. Uh, oh, looks like last November. So these should match your iRead materials for uh, for 2020. Excuse me. Um, adding a program is fairly easy. Um, we looked at a couple sample programs today that were fairly simple. Let's look at the kids program in more detail because that's the one we went through the most. Um, this is how you program the logic of your summer reading program. This is how you actually configure it. Um, kids pro progress through levels of the summer reading program. Now on a paper-based program, you might only see the kids like twice. Once at the beginning of the summer when they pick up their form, and once at the end of the summer when they hand in the form and they get a prize, right? With book points, we're interacting with the kid every time they enter reading amounts. So every time they enter a book, we can interact with them and give them something. We can incentivize them. We can congratulate them. We can invite them to the library. Um, it's up to you how complex you make your program. Remember I said one library – had 65 levels. So every time a kid read a book, up to 65 books, they got another little digital badge. That's a, that's a very complex program. It's admirable, but it, it's probably overkill for 90% of you. Most libraries use probably around 8 to 12 steps or levels to progress. So for our kids level here, remember, Patsy was reading uh, 
tracking her number of minutes that she read. And we said every minute is worth one point. So when she reads 60 minutes or one hour, that's when she hits level one. So here's how this works out. Everybody starts with zero points, of course. But you know what? We still want to give them a badge. Let's give everybody a badge for starting off. Let's give them the space buff badge here. And that way we incentivize people and let them know digital badges are cool and they want more. After one hour here, after 60 minutes, we're going to award a raffle ticket to, to kids who complete this. And then we're going to give them another badge. We'll give them badge number one. And as you can see, as we progress down here, level two, 120 minutes, 120 points, equivalent of two hours. We're going to award her another drawing ticket and another badge. And we've progressed down here until it changes at level five. That's 300 minutes, five hours. Here we're going to award a prize. This is one of those prizes that she has to come in and claim in person for inventory control. Again, that's optional. You don't have to award a prize. Uh, we're also going to give her some extra bonus tickets for the raffle and then another badge. So these are our primary incentives for each level as the kid progresses through the summer reading program. Uh, we can award a prize, we can award drawing tickets in the raffle, and we can give them badges. And then we can also give them congratulations messages. For instance, um, after she's read 60 minutes, we say, you've earned 60 points and another badge. Way to go. That is awesome. Don't forget to get your I love reading sticker, right? Anything you want here and then save it. So you can create a very complex program. One thing I always want to stress to people if that's intimidating to you, we give people worksheets in our documentation and we encourage you for the first year you run book points to actually write this stuff down and plan it out ahead of time, right? So if, we, uh, if you come to book points training uh, beginning in March, we'll actually go through one of these worksheets together and we'll say, okay, are you tracking the number of books or the number of pages or the number of hours or the number of minutes? And then we'll ask you to start tracking how many minutes or pages do they have to read and then what do they get? Do they get a prize, a badge, and what is their, what is their, congratulati what is their congratulatory message? After they complete the worksheet, you're going to find it a breeze to go through and add your levels to your program. Um, once you've read the documentation and sat through training, it should only take you 10 to 15 minutes to set up an average program. Now, if you're going to give out 60 stickers or 60 badges per program, it's going to take you a little longer. It's going to take you a few hours. But if you just want 10 to 12 steps or levels, uh, you should be able to do it in you know, 10 to 20 minutes. Uh, you can see it's very, you know, just fill out this form. Level 15, uh, they've got to hit 1,500 minutes. You know, way to go, all-star, and give them a prize. So um, we're running real short on time. I apologize. Again, Book Points is very flexible, has a lot of features, and I've tried to show you all of the core features and how easy it is to use for librarians. Um, I'm happy to stay past the end of the hour, of course. Are there any questions that, that people have now, Margaret, that we can answer, or anything we didn't look at that you want to look at closer? Well, I don't see any questions in the Q&A or chat, so uh, why don't you show us where this awesome documentation lives since you've uh, foreshadowed it a little bit, or a little bit more of the oh. points website that might encourage people to go check out. Um, you betcha, right you betcha, that's a, mm -hmm. that's a great idea. Um, so bookpoints.org, uh, you can take a look. Again, you can download book points yourself for free. Um, you don't have to pay us uh, anything to do that. It's open source, it's free to download. We do encourage you to join the community and share your innovations and any improvements you make. Uh, again, we do offer book points hosting uh, for a small fee. It's a sliding scale. Um, the vast majority of libraries in the United States uh, are gonna pay $1,000 to $2,000 a year for hosting, and that includes unlimited hosting, training, and support. Um, we do offer support Monday through Saturday uh, through, um, through the summer reading months. So that begins in March and goes um, into the first week of October. Uh, so we have support via phone, email, and chat. Uh, you can always pick up the phone. You're going to get me 90% of the time, but you can always pick up the phone. 
um, and, and let us know if you're having issues. Um, the documentation, um, we have a special section just for documentation. I've overhauled all of that for 2020. Uh, we include tons of graphics and we sort of get you started and then walk you through every step of customizing the sign up form, building out your programs, customizing your color, font, footer, etc. Uh, and then how to use the additional features as well, uh, such as the photo gallery or the simple event calendar. Uh, so all of that is been well documented. Um, if you have suggestions for documentation, we have a feedback form on the site um, and we welcome your, your suggestions. But like if you want to change the color scheme of book points, um, we include uh, some screenshots of how to do that and what some of the different uh, color elements are that you can change. Um, and then where you go to change those and how to use the color wheel to do that. Um, if you want to customize the sign up process, um, how do you add a list of your library branches to the sign up form? This is how you do that. Um, so absolutely everything is documented, but we also offer, uh, again, training beginning in March. So we offer one hour training classes. Um, there's an intro for people who are new and a refresher for people who have used book points in the past. Um, the refresher is shorter. Um, and then we also offer, um, if I can get back to the support section, what are called one-on-one -on -one meetings uh, throughout the spring. So those are going to start in April. Um, after you go to a training class, if you still have additional questions, uh, you contact us and schedule a one-on-one -on -one appointment. Again, I handle about 80 to 90 percent of those, um, so you'll probably be talking to me. Uh, but we'll actually connect with you via Zoom and help you answer any questions or do any setup stuff that you had trouble with. Um, I'm very proud of the support that we offer. I run the support, obviously, um, and I'm very proud that we uh, we get pretty high ratings. Uh, people are pretty satisfied with our report, uh, and I'm very proud of that. Um, again, we you know we want to be here for librarians um, and and support you folks all summer long. So uh, never hesitate to let us know if if we can help out with anything. Um, a couple other resources, just to let you know, we have an, um, a pl the planning worksheets, uh, again, are available on the BookPoint site. You can link to our demo site if you want to play with the demo site. Um, it's demo.bookpoints.org if you want to just take a look and sign up and uh, explore some of the programs as well. If you want to explore the back end of the demo site, please, uh, uh, there's a form to contact me here on BookPoints, uh, and I'll give you um, a, a time-limited account uh, to play around on the site as an administrator. Um, and that helps keep people from uh, from uh, using that too long. So, any questions about book points? Margaret, the chat window pretty clear? The chat window is pretty clear. Just a big thank you, Jim, uh, from our attendees well, for putting on this wonderful webinar for us. Oh, well, thank you so much for having me. I know um, we're really proud of, uh, you know, working with uh, with Bywater over the years, and you folks are so into open source, and we really, we really love that. We have an affinity for, for obviously, for open source companies. So thanks so much for, for having us on here to talk about other open source software. Um, and obviously, I love talking about BookPoints. So all of you should feel free to contact me through the BookPoints website um, if there's anything else that I can answer, um, answer for you. Uh, and in the meantime, no matter whether you're using BookPoints, paper, or something else, I definitely wish you all the best for a successful summer reading program. So have a great summer, everyone. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you, all our attendees at this webinar. Again, uh, we've recorded it and it will be made available after today. So you can share it with your colleagues or the library uh, in the next county and spread the word about open source digital collaboration. Thank you again so much, Jim. Thanks again, Margaret. Have a great day. Bye-bye.